blessing and a privilege for us to gather together in the name of Jesus Christ once again. Uh, for those of you that are in the building, we thank God for all you. For those of you that are listening by way of uh, Zoom call, those of you who are watching by way of Facebook, we have no difference. So we thank them, God, just for allowing us another day. Uh, we are in the 23rd week of virtual celebration, worship all of that, and I know it's a bit tedious for some of you all, but at the same time, what we want to keep in mind that our God is gracious, our God is good, and regardless of the circumstance, he is deserving of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. There are times in life that God will give us opportunities to adjust to whatever he is, the wisdom to know how to make those adjustments and all of the resources necessary to get it done. I want to say this before we get started to our parents. Uh, would you bring your children in early? We do have a, a wonderful presentation, a surprise presentation uh, that we want to uh, present today for our children, uh, something that they resonate to, something that they know about. Uh, so if you've been letting them sleep, get them up this morning, please. If you've been letting them stay in the bed, this is the morning to get them up. Uh, we want them to share in this, uh, this wonderful celebration. Anthony is going to be reading for us the, uh, the scriptures. Marshall is going to be praying for us. But we're going to begin with a song, a favorite again of the hymn of the church. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. So wherever you are, let's join in together in the celebration of our love. Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add their learning and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the saying and the riddles of the wise. Fear, the Lord, fear of the Lord God is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
I read for you Proverbs uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Let us bow, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, Father of the true word, oh Lord, we want to say thank you for this morning, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for rising us up this morning, oh Lord. Thank you for the activities of our limbs, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord, for guiding us safely last night, oh Lord. Now, oh Lord, we're asking you, oh Lord, to watch over as we go through this day, oh Lord. Watch over this program, oh Lord. Watch over the churches that are standing up and in your name, oh Lord. Help the pastors, oh Lord, to preach thy word, oh Lord. And oh Lord, open our hearts so we can hear the word, oh Lord. Because we, if we do not hear your word, oh Lord, we are, we are falling by the wayside. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the pastors, O oh Lord. Thank you for everyone, O oh Lord, for the churches that are standing in your name. Now, O oh Lord, thank you for guiding us through this pandemic, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the one that you are healed, O oh Lord. The one that you are taking it through, but you are still there with us, O oh Lord. Let us not forget that you are here, O oh Lord, with us. Guide us and strengthen us, O oh Lord. Bless this nation, O oh Lord, because we need you, O oh Lord. I know it's your will, O oh Lord, that you have to bring us closer, O oh Lord. And all this, O oh Lord, is just showing us that even though we have a church and a meeting place to come to, but we should carry our heart and your love, O oh Lord, through our everyday life. Bless us and keep us and guide us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. understand this is live television and the kind of the transition that we have to make uh, probably doesn't fit well. Come on ladies, y'all come on right on. But we want to do this presentation now just on behalf of our children. If we were doing a recording, you wouldn't see all the movement and the light going on. But just ask that you would be patient with us. It's just a time again of being able to praise God, to worship God, uh, to demonstrate again our appreciation to God for who he is. They're going to be presenting that in a unique way today. So we would that you would accept the presentation from our puppet ministry. Uh, these ladies who are represented here today, we are grateful and thankful to them for the presentation that they're going to make. So we would that you would receive them at this time as they come. Wherever you are, give them a hand of encouragement.
All right. All right. Beautiful. Amen. Amen. Good job, ladies.
set me free. Then you rose from the grave. My soul would be saved. Jesus, Lord, I thank you for all you done for me. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for all, all you done for me. I thank you, I thank you, you died to you set me free, and you rose, you did, up the grave, you did, my soul, you did, for me, you did, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, for all you, oh, oh, I want to tell me, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I thank you, I thank you for all, all you've done for me. Jesus, Jesus, I thank you, I thank you, you died to, died to set me free. Then you rose, you did, from the grave, you did, and my soul you did would be me. saved. You did. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, oh Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all, all you've done for me. You was wounded, you did for my transgression. You, did. you was bruised for my iniquity. Just time a you did of my peace. You did was upon you. you did. Yes, it was. You did. By your strife, you did. Lord, I'm here. You did. By your word, you did. Yes, I'm saved. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. For you. Oh, yeah. All you done for me. You was wounded. You did. My transgression. You did. You was bruised for my iniquity. You, you did. The chastisement. You did. Of my peace. You did. Was upon you. You did. Yes, it was. You by your strength, you did. Lord, I'm here. You did. By your word, you did. Lord, oh, I'm seeing. You did. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. Yes, I do, Lord. Jesus, she, yeah. I thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. You've been good to me, Jesus. Yes, you have. I thank you. Woke me up this morning, Jesus. Thought of me on my way. I thank you. Give me eyes to see, Jesus. Legs to walk, I thank you. A voice to talk, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I gotta say thank you, Lord. I thank you. You brought me. Jesus, mighty long way. I thank when I'm Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I love to call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Been good to me, yes, yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thank you, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, you, thank you, Jesus, Jesus. You didn't have to bless me, thank you, Lord, you did. Jesus, you've been good to me, thank you. Yes, you have. Jesus. You brought me, thank you, down through the years, Jesus. So many ups and downs, thank Lord, you. you've still been good. Jesus. Look around and see thank you. how you bless me, Jesus. bless me once, thank you. you bless me. Twice. You bless me, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Have you been good to you? Thank you. Wherever you may be today, maybe in your home, Thank you. out in your car, Jesus. in the church house, Thank you. God is still good. Jesus. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Tell him thank you. Jesus. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Tell him thank you. Jesus. Thank you for the doctors. Thank, thank you for the nurses. Lord, you've been good. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, thank you, thank you, oh Jesus, Jesus, for all you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well. Amen. I certainly want to appreciatively applaud our, um, our puppet ministry. Ladies, you are absolutely wonderful. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Y'all had me jumping up and down. I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. And I believe that that ought to be our reality for us, who all, all of us who are lovers of the Lord, lovers of Jesus Christ. Uh, when we talk about praising him, that ought to be, that ought to be for real. It ought not be anything we pretend. It ought not be anything that we make up. It ought not be anything that we're forced to do. We ought to do it just because he's just been that good to us. Amen? Would you stand with me as we get ready to go to God in prayer? I ask you to pray for our own brother Clyde Berry. It's amazing how God orchestrated it. I told, I told Julia this week, this past week, I said, Julia, go ahead and take brother Clyde Berry off of the prayer concerns because he has been he's been uh, going to work a little bit over a month now five days a week uh, he's not a young man anymore but he's been working five days a week and, and, and doing, doing very well on his job and the like but this week he got a call the, uh, the doctors called his wife and said need to bring him to the hospital immediately there was some blood tests that they had done and they discovered that uh, our brother, our friend, who is the husband of Lucy, uh, the father of Clyde Berry Jr., has stomach cancer. And so we want to be praying for him. I uh, spoke to uh, Lucy this morning, and they've discovered that the, um, it's really not operable uh, uh, in terms of its progress, where it has gone. Um, other parts of his body start to be affected. Other organs are being affected by it. But what we do know is that our God is an awesome God. Um, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't always heal the way we think he should, the way, the time that we would like him to do it, and the way that we think he would have. But we do know he can. You know, the, uh, the Hebrew boys, when they were headed toward that, uh, that fiery furnace, they said, we know our God is able. And that's the part that we have faith in, that God is able. We, we got to trust him with the results. But what we do know is that our God is able. Yeah, yeah. If you know that, give him a hand praise today. That's no doubt about it. Our God is able. Our God is able. Also praying for Brother Milton Arby, who is going through some serious pain in his feet or foot uh, that he had again operated on a while back, worked up, done on a while back. But uh, it's just something about life, and it's just something about living long enough that uh, changes are uh, inevitable to take place. Got got some some beautiful Harris girls in here right now, just just as young. And full of vigor and vitality uh, and, and all of us can say you know I used to be like that I used to I used to have that kind of energy I used to have that kind of vim vigor and vitality yeah I, re I remember days that we could play <clears throat> all day long all day long all day long watch this barefooted on gravel all day long I tell you, I tell you, it's a different time now. It's a different time. And so, and so we, we know God is able. So let's, let's pause. We're going to go to God in prayer. Father, how we love you, how we thank you again for being the 
great and awesome God that you are. We thank you, Father, for loving us beyond our ability to always comprehend. We thank you for your grace and to see that fulfillment in your, your grace in the person of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that we can know that because of the indwelling of your Holy Spirit who lives in us, who abides in us, who resides in us. For those of us that have trusted and put our faith and our confidence in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we thank you, Father, for things as well as they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ideally, Lord, if you were to ask us, it would be, in our estimation, better. This would be better. That would be better. Everything would be good. Everything would be excellent. But God, we know you made heaven for that. But in the meantime, Lord, we're going to say thank you for things as well as they are. Because you have shown to us these last 168 hours that you're an awesome God. You are in heaven and you do as you please. You still rule. You still reign. Uh, you still got the right to rule. You still got the right to reign. And you demonstrate that every day. And so we thank you for seeing the demonstration of your power in that way. We pray for people all over the world. The six continents where there's COVID-19, coronavirus, pray again for those on that uninhabited continent of Antarctica where it's cold and people are not living there. But Lord, there, there might be some that are there. We pray for people all over the world. You know the situation, the circumstance much better than any of us could ever understand. So God, we commit ourselves to you. We commit our lives to you. We commit our wholeness to you. We commit our results to you. We commit our consequences to you. Because we know that whatever you do is always the best means possible. So we thank you for it. Now, Lord, as we gather in this place, we do want to live before you, our own brother Clyde Berry. We live before you, our own brother Milton RV. God, you know what these men are experiencing. You know what they're going through. You know how they're feeling much better than I could ever, ever understand. So, Lord... We ask that you would have your way in their lives. God, we're going to ask you to heal them. Oh, yeah, we're going to ask you to heal them. We, we beg that you would heal them, and we, we beg that you would heal them miraculously. We know you got the power for them to do the tests on Brother Clyde Berry and, and for the doctors just to be able to kind of shake their head and say, we don't know what happened. <laughs> but, Mr. Berry, you are, you are discharged from Methodist Hospital, Katy. Father, we pray for Milton. We know wherever he is right now that whatever has been going on in that foot, whatever has happened in that foot, we know you got healing power. And we know what you are capable of doing. So, Lord, we ask it. We don't demand it. We don't command it. But we ask it in Jesus' name that you would just have your way, have your will, and allow it to be done because, Lord, whatever you do is always the best means possible. So once again, thank you for all of our members, for all of our friends, all of our family. We ask, Lord, that you would keep us with our minds always stayed on you, always focused on you that matters most, on you that, are, that is high but you sit low, you who see everything we're doing, know everything we're thinking, can handle every situation that you allow to arise up in our lives. So we commit our way, we commit our will, we commit all that we are to you this day, asking again that you would have your way in us and through us so that our lives can reflect your glory. For we pray these things in the name of your Son, who is Jesus, the very Christ of God. Amen. Amen. While you're yet standing or wherever you may be, I'm going to ask you to turn to Psalm 146 in your Bibles to Psalm 146. Psalm 146. We're still going through the process of reading one chapter a day, and I pray that all of us are um, staying up with the, uh, the reading for this particular month that we are dealing with. We're just about 
uh, to the end of reading all of the rest of uh, Psalm, up to Psalm 150, and that's going to be uh, at the end of next week. But we pray and trust that you are following that reading, and more than anything else, that you're allowing the Word of God to be real in your life. Don't read it just for information, but read it for transformation. Uh, read it to see how God will change you or change your circumstance uh, in terms of what you may be experiencing. Psalm 146, it starts off by saying, praise the Lord. Hmm. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Verse 3, do not put your trust in princes nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Again, the subject for today is praise the Lord at all times. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we, 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 have, we have learned uh, by way of the study of God's word in this church, that every time we hear the phraseology, praise the Lord, it is not something that we repeat back to each other. We recognize it is an action. It is something that God expects us to do as a result of the exhortation that is given by someone to praise the Lord. Uh, that, 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 that other word that we are familiar with, that word hallelujah, is actually the Hebrew word for the English phrase, praise the Lord. And it is, yes, it is a verb. It is a complete subject. It requires a response. It requires doing something as, a, as the result of what has been called for one to do. We've talked about the fact that the only reason that I would say praise the Lord is because in my own mind, before I say it to you, I have already determined he's worthy of praise. And in my own mind, I've already said it, God, you're so worthy. In my own mind, I'm already, I've already expressed some level of, of honor and worship toward him. And having thought about that, then the call now is for you to join with me to praise the Lord. So we're saying again, those of you, our, 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 our neighbors, our visitors, our members in Christ, our brothers and sisters who are listening to us today, that anytime you say the word hallelujah or anytime you say the word praise the Lord, never ever come in your church and you say praise the Lord, everybody, and then everybody says praise the Lord. That's not giving God proper praise. That is an exhortation. That is an exaltation. It is a way of encouraging us. And the psalmist today is giving us a word. We don't know, we don't know who wrote this psalm. We don't know when this psalm was written. But what we do know is that when we look at the life and the history of Israel, this psalm could have been written at any point in the history of Israel. It could have been written, again, during the monarchy period. It could have been written again during the theocratic period, the time when God was the ruler. It could have been the time when the kings were the ruler. It could have been written when they were in exile out of Jerusalem in the area of Babylon. It could have been written when they came back from exile after 70 years 
of, of being able, of experiencing the judgment of God. So we don't know who wrote it. We don't know when it was wrote, written, but we can see how it can apply to Israel at all points in their history. And the good news about God's word, because God's word is timeless and there's timeless principles and timeless truths to God's word, it can also speak to you and I, that you and I, regardless to our circumstance, you know, regardless to our situation, we ought to praise the Lord at all times. Yeah, yeah. So this psalm is, again, the first thing that he says to us in verse 1 and 2 is praise the Lord. Oh, <laughs> somebody got it. Praise the Lord. Anytime you hear praise the Lord, first of all, anytime you hear about praise, uh, you can look at it, I, I say kind of the ABC of praise. First of all, when you praise the Lord, there ought to be some adoration, meaning adoration comes from the fact that, number one, uh, I internally praise the Lord. Notice what the psalmist says. The psalmist says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, for it is a good thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Meaning again, internally, we ought to praise the Lord. There is a process of thinking about who he is, a process of thinking about what he has done, and as a result of that, we ought to adore the Lord for who he is. So first of all, we praise the Lord internally, and how do we do that? We do that with adoration. It's to say to God who we think he is. You are awesome. You are brilliant. You are caring. You are divine. You are excellent. You are faithful. You are good. You are holy. You are our father. You are infinite. You are Jesus, you are just, you are the king of kings, you're the lord of lords, you are merciful. It's ascribing to God who he is. It comes with adoration. The other, the other part of it is that after we think about it, we ought to boast on the Lord. Yeah, you ought to boast on the Lord. And can't nobody treat me like you can. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. Lord, you, you've been just so good to me, even beyond my ability to fully comprehend. Lord, there's nobody like you. I, I, I adore him, and then I, I boast on him, and then after that's done, in order to praise him, I celebrate him. That's the ABCs of praise, ador adoration. It ought to be boasting and bragging, and then I ought to celebrate. Now, whatever way you celebrate, you celebrate him. Some of you have heard it before. We had, we had two stellar saints of our church who praised the Lord in extremely different ways. Uh, pastor Honorzine Wilson, again, a former pastor of our church, who, who praised the Lord. I'm talking about he praised the Lord so much till he would faint, Michael. He would, he would pass out that you had to revive him with smelling salts or something, let him smell a shoe or something. You had to just literally bring him back. The woman that... That, he, that, that was his wife for, for, nil, for 50 years in, in, in spite of all the challenges that they went through and things that they, she was the total opposite. She didn't hardly say anything. She just kind of had this little thing that she was doing, but there was no doubt she was praising the Lord. So the reality for us is that after we adore him, we boast on him, but we ought to celebrate him. Some of you clap your hands. Some of you pat your feet. Sometimes you're going to cry, whatever it may be, but you got to make sure you praise, watch this, the Lord. And that he is the object of our praise. Not, not just for what he does for us. We praise him for who he is. And when you think about who he is, it's, it, you can see who he is and what he does are absolutely the very same thing. So the psalmist says we ought to pray him, praise him internally. Matter of fact, Psalm 103 verse 1 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Psalm 104 verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God, for you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. They recognize that internally we got to praise the Lord. And one of the things that all of us can learn, and I know sometimes we say that, 
all of us don't have no problem with praying the Lord for the big things. You know, that big monetary gift or uh, that new car or that house or I made an A on my paper or I got a new boyfriend, I got a new girlfriend. We can praise the Lord for that kind of thing. I got, a, I got a girlfriend that I had that I'm glad she gone. You know, we praise the Lord for, for all kinds of things. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. But we ought to learn to praise the Lord, how we say it sometimes, for the little things. Listen, folks, just being able to take a step, being able to breathe, be, be, just being able to be coherent that you can hear somebody say something to you, just being able to breathe his air is enough to praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you all, but I praise the Lord. I found a penny, I praise the Lord. Because that says to me, I'm a penny richer than what I was yesterday. So whatever it may be, we ought to praise the Lord. I don't know about you all. I'm praising the Lord for these masks. Somebody ought to give, give God some praise right now. Praise the Lord for the masks. I know some of us say, oh, man, it, oh, praise the Lord. If that thing going to control corona, praise the Lord. I need some control over corona. So I wear the mask, praise the Lord. So we ought to thank him, we ought to praise him, what? For everything. Then he says we praise him internally, but we ought to praise him infinitely. All the time. Not just in the good times, not just in the tough times, but we ought to praise him, what? All the time. Notice he says in verse verse 2, praise the Lord on my soul. I will praise the Lord, I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. God is saying, as long as you got your mind, you ought to praise him. But I know somebody saying, man, you just don't know how sick I am. You ought to praise him. You don't know how tough my life is right now. I'm still saying you ought to praise him. Man, you just don't know how much trouble I'm having on my job. You ought to praise him. Pastor, this thing with this social distancing drives me nuts, but you ought to praise him. Ooh, boy, I'm having trouble with this virtual learning, man. This thing is getting... On my nerves sometimes, but you ought to what? You ought to praise him. You ought to praise him all the time. It does not matter whether the circumstances are good. It does not matter if circumstances are bad. It does not matter if the circumstances are convenient or inconvenient. You ought to praise the Lord at all times. So I praise him what? Internally. I praise him infinitely. Then I praise him what? Inspirationally. Notice what he says. I will sing praises to my God. While I have my being. Again, I- I- inspirational. It's, it's the urge to do something. It's the urge to do something. So when you think about God and you start recognizing your problems, I, I double dog dare you to start singing a song. That regardless to whatever your problem may be, God has the ability to help you to see him rather than your problem. You listen, listen. I'll be honest with you all. The song that has been blessing me more than anything else is the little song that Corey and I sing together. And it, oh, how wonderful it is. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Oh, how marvelous it is. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. I don't have to worry. That's what he said. About the things ahead, all I got to do is live right. Just shall live by faith and believe what he said. I can call him in the morning. I can call him in the middle of the night. And when I call him, he has a way of making everything all right. Jesus promised. Come on, help me, y'all. That he will take care of me. So, 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 so the next time you start looking at your problem, Crank up a little song. I don't know what your song is. And here's the good thing about it. When you sing to the Lord, he don't care what key you're in. Mm-mm. Bass, I'm talking about tenor, soprano, baritone, nail tone. It don't matter to the Lord. All he wants you to do is just sing praises to his name. And I don't know about you all. When you singing to the Lord, don't you sound good? Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter what anybody else talking about. You out of tune. No, no, no. When I'm with the Lord, I'm in tune. It really doesn't matter what anybody else say. I'm just saying, praise the Lord. And he says, I will sing 
I will sing, I will sing praises to my God. Then he reminds us, he reminds us, not only, not only must we, not only must we praise the Lord, in verse 3 and 4 he says, put no trust in people. Verse 3 and 4, look, it says, do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Why? Why, psalmist? Why, why do I do that? His spirit departs. He returns to the, his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Why, why? I praise the Lord, but I do not put trust, put no trust in people. Now, when he says put no trust in people, that, that, that's something that's going on in the, uh, the Hebrew grammar. It's something that you do habitually. Make sure the Lord says, don't have the habit of putting all your trust in people. Mm, don't, don't, have, don't have the habit. Listen, there's a certain level of trust and confidence that we put in people, but we have to understand it comes with a limitation. Because on our best day, we can say what we're going to do, but it doesn't always mean that we can carry it out because circumstances sometimes can stop us. So he tells us, don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in man. And the reason I say that is because I'm hearing a lot of conversation in our society right now like some way, somehow, our life is going to get better with a change of party. The Bible says, God says, put no trust in man. Why? Two things he says. He going to die. I know that's, that's tough. I know that, we, like, we don't, oh, I don't want to hear, ooh, I don't want to hear that. But that's what he says. Verse 4, his spirit what? Departs. His spirit departs. So regardless to whatever human, whoever the human being may be, there's a certain level of trust and confidence we can put in them, but we always got to understand that whatever people are capable of doing, of saying they may or may not do without the Lord's help, it'll never get done. So we always look at the person that we're asking to help us, but we always look up to God who ultimately is going to be the one who gives the person help to help us. Am I making sense, y'all? If the Lord don't help the person that I need help from, guess what? I ain't getting no help. If the Lord don't wake up the person that I need help from, I'm not getting any help. If the Lord don't give that person a good mind that I need help from, I won't get help. So ultimately what he says, all my help comes from, comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. So I just, want, I just want to encourage us, those of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, to always keep in mind that regardless to who is in office, it is not the person in office that's taking care of us. Listen, listen, if that, if that is the case, man, you get in trouble every eight years. Every, every eight years, you got to look for somebody else to take care of you. But when is in the Lord, you have uh, the right now to know that he is the one that can help you what? At all times. At all times. At all times. Put, put no trust in people. Put no put a level of confidence. But don't put habitual confidence in people. He says again, his spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans, whatever it is that he had in mind, she had in mind to do for you that you needed them to do for you, it goes away. Why? Because God is showing us that he ought to be our help. That takes us right down to the last part of our, 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 our lesson today. Happy, verse 5, is he who has the God of Jacob for his help. Notice what he says. You're blessed. I, I, I don't know about you all, but I, I, like, I like to be happy, and I like to be around happy people. Yeah, happy, 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 happy people, happy people. Yeah, happy, happy people. Do something for me, man. I mean, folk who, you know, folk who, who kind of, you know, they, they, 
And I know sometimes we, we actually get bothered. Like, why, why are they so why, why are they so happy? I mean, good Lord. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not experience joy and happiness? I don't know about you all, but the Bible even says that, 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 that being happy has a way of even helping the body to heal. So we ought to, we ought to, we ought to, he said, but happy, happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his, don't put no trust in man, don't, 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 why? Because ultimately, don't put no trust in princes, don't put no trust in the son of man, because ultimately he's going to die, he's going to be debilitated, he may have to deal with dementia, whatever it may be, but the word is saying, put your trust in the Lord, because he'll always be there to help you. So happy, happy, happy is the person who place their help. And that's the third thing. Place your help and hope in the Lord God. Have limited expectancy for human beings, but put all of your expectations in the Lord. And when you put your expectations in the Lord, don't make it be the expectation that you want it to be. Make it be the expectation that he desires for you because he knows what's best for you. Listen, folks, I'm convinced that God, God, God gives us pain for reasons. Yeah, sometimes we got pain so that we learn how to rely on the Lord. You know, it's some of us right now, we know we didn't have some of the pain that we have, but we'd be some ramblers. We'd be in so much trouble, man, because we'd be, I mean, just getting on, you know, I mean, we move, move around everywhere, getting into everything. But because we got this pain, we can't do stuff like we used to do, so it keeps us quiet. It makes us go a bit slower. We, we don't have the money that we normally would have because now we got to go to the doctor and all of that kind of thing. But the Lord has a way of helping us to know I can help you, but it's, uh, it's not always the way that I think or I expect it to be. It's, it's how he's determined it should be. So now, so now, so now. When he talks about Jacob, what he's talking about Israel, he's talking about the, the, the covenant that God made with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And here now, we as believers can also experience the same things that the Lord did then, he still has the power to do now. Now watch this, watch this. Here's what the psalmist is showing us. He, he begins to list 12 things, and, um, and so I'm going to need another couple of hours for y'all to hang in there with me. Because I need to do an exposition on all. No, no I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I, he lists 12 things that God can do. Now watch this. He didn't say God will do it. He said God can do it. And brothers and sisters, that's where our faith is developed. Our faith is developed in what God can do. Even though he may not do it when I think he should, the way I think he would, or even that he will. Watch now, watch now. Notice what he says. He picks it up at verse, starting at, starting at verse at verse 5. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Again, we're talking about that expectation. Watch this. Who made heaven and earth. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to look at verse 6 through 10. Keeping in mind what you just read in verse 3 and 4. Put no trust in man, but what, what, but place your trust and push, place your help and hope in the Lord your God. Watch now, watch now. Why? Because man has limitations. Why should I trust God? Why should I praise the Lord? Why should I extol him? Why should I adore him? Why should I brag on him? Why should I celebrate him? I'm glad you asked. Notice what the verse says. Verse 6. Who made heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Now what person you know made heaven and earth? Watch this. The sea and all that is in them. Man couldn't have made the sea because if man would have made the sea, he actually would have given himself the ability like a fish to be able to stay in the sea. So we're determined man didn't make the earth. He didn't make the sea. He didn't make anything that lives in it. Watch this. He, who, verse 7, executes just, I'm sorry, who keeps truth forever. You can't trust people. 
Because people, I don't care who we are, we're either going to lie or we're going to leave. People can say, we can say what we're going to do, but we're going to lie or we're going to leave. I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to say I'm, I'm going to do something, but I lie about it or I just leave it behind. Just act like you never even asked me. So we can't put our trust in people, but why? We can put our trust in the Lord who does what? Who keeps truth when? God is faithful at all times. We can rely on him. We can depend on him at all times. Yeah, how many, how many of you, how many of you, you know, you've had a particular, you know, uh, appliance worked on at your house, and you notice how they tell you it's going to be between the hours of 12 and 2. And some of them even go further than that. They say somewhere between 12 and 4. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes they don't still don't show up till 4.10. You know they lied. They told you they were going to do something at a certain time, but still didn't show up at that time. I'm just saying, but when the Lord tells us, he will provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory. When the Lord says to you, if you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not on your understanding, he will make your path smooth. When the Lord says something to us, we can count on that. Uh-huh, he says that he keeps truth forever. He executes justice for the oppressed. Yes, he does. Oh, right now, a whole lot of protesting going on. We know that there are some problems in America, but the Lord helps us to understand. He says it in, in, uh, in Psalm uh, 37, fret not because of evil doers. Listen, folk, listen, folk, there's a lot that people are going to get away, all of us are going to get away with on this side. But when judgment comes, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 says, it is appointed unto man to die once, but after death, what? comes the judgment. And so when you look at life sometimes and we look at the fact that people, it looks like people are getting away with stuff. And we ask ourselves the question, why doesn't the Lord do anything about it? Let me tell you something. If he don't do it in this lifetime, he will do it later. But he's showing that he has the power to do everything that he says he will do. So, so, so some of you are saying, man, all, you know, all of the oppression that's going on, all of the misabuse and the like that's going on. Listen, folks, we can change all the laws we want. We can protest all we want. We can vote all we want. And we ought to do all of that. But at the end of the day, we got to trust the results to the Lord. Last I look, he said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him water. If he's naked, you ought to close him. We got to trust the Lord with the results. He reminds us. He reminds us in that word. He executes justice. He gives food. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of food pantries going on right now, y'all. Gives food to the hungry. A lot of food pantries going on. Everybody got to understand. It's not just the United States government. Hey, have you ever thought of where food come from? Most of the time we don't. We're going to say the grocery store. But when you really think where food come from, it's from the ground. If the Lord don't supply the dirt, if the Lord don't give the rain, if the Lord don't supply the water, all of us will go hungry. So in reality, no matter who we may get it from, it's ultimately coming from, am I making sense, y'all? Watch now. He said he gives, he gives food to the hungry. He frees the prisoners. Again, those that have been captive even by sin. Thank God, those of us that are here today, we can express the fact that I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Can I get a witness in here? He frees those who are prisoners. He reminds us again in his word, he gives sight to those who've been spiritually blind. We have to believe that that's what he means because in when you read the history of Israel, there's not one indication that we read in scripture of a miracle where a person was given back their sight. You had leprosy, you had, they, were, they came back from death and all of that, but there's not one passage in the Old Testament other until we get to Jesus where sight is given to, to human beings. 
So what he's saying, they were blind. We are spiritually blinded where we could not see God. But thank God now he's removed the blindness and we can see him for who he is. Praise the Lord. He loves the righteous. God loves the righteous. God loves everyone, y'all. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But those of us who, who have attained his righteousness, God says, I love you. Why? So we ought to praise him. Just the mere fact that you have the righteousness of God, you ought to praise him. He protects the strangers. Israel would understand that because they were strangers in Egypt. They would understand that because they were strangers in Babylon. They would understand what it meant to be a stranger. We once, at the Bible, it's in Ephesians, that we were once aliens. We were out of the commonwealth of Israel. But through Jesus Christ, we have now become uh, citizens of heaven. Philippians chapter 3, we are citizens of the kingdom of God. We ought to be grateful. And we ought to praise the Lord. He, he supports the fatherless and the widows. God knows how to take care of his own. Doesn't matter what the situation may be. He knows how to take care of those that appear to be helpless. He knows how to come to the aid of those that sometimes we have thrown over to the side. God knows how to take care of his own. He handles the wicked. Y'all look at verse 9. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turns what? Upside down. What is that telling us? That God, the Lord that we serve, he controls everything. So it doesn't matter how wicked we think a person may be. What God is saying, I'm going to have the last word in that wickedness. The issue for us, I don't know about you all, the issue for me is I want to see him turn it upside down when? right now. That's what I want. I, I, I want, I want, I, I want, I want, and I think all of us will attest to that. When we saw, when we saw that knee on the neck, in most of our minds, we were thinking, there's no need for no jury. Ain't no need for no trial. That is, you ought to be settled right now. He ought to be executed just like he executed that brother, right now. But we got to understand it's not up to us. We have to do our part judicially. We have to do our part government-wise. We have to do our part in voting. But ultimately, we have to leave it up to who? The Lord. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. He reigns forever, y'all. That's why we don't put no trust in people. Because we only got one who reigns forever. Yeah, we can't put our confidence in folk. Why? Because what he's showing us, human, humanity has limitations. So, come November, come October, when we go to vote, make sure that we're thinking more about the Lord than we are about the person's that we're voting for because the people that we're voting for are limited in what they are able to do, but the Lord God whom we serve. There are no limitations on what God is able to do. Listen, folk, when, when America was declared, declared freedom in 1776, we have to understand, for the most part, we people who are of color, we, we were not inclusive in that declaration. Uh, yeah, we got to understand that even, even after, even after uh, we would say that, that they, they had to write what we call the 15th amend Amendment that to the Constitution that gave us the right to be able to vote. But even when that was done, they found ways to keep black folk, people of color, from voting. My question is, when I look at us right now, knowing that our ancestors had to go through that kind of garbage. But if we're here right now, it's evident that he took care of them then. Don't, don't miss that. If you're here today, 
you are the evidence of the fact that God took care of your people when you were not even thought of by the folk that you are ancestors from now or descendants from now. So the question is, who was taking care of them then when they couldn't vote? It was the Lord. So now, even though we got Republican, we got Democrat, we got Independent, let's make sure that we don't put our confidence in that. Put our confidence in, in the Lord. Rosa, Rosa Felipe, 41-year-old mother of two boys. Uh, she has been, she's been in Miami Hospital uh, since early March. Matter of fact, she was a, she was a, uh, a clinician, a technician, actually, in the hospital, and she actually um, uh, was tested positive for COVID-19. She has been on a ventilator. She was on a ventilator for two months, uh, but before going on, on a ventilator, um, she asked for a piece of paper and wrote to her children not to give up or to be upset with God because if something happened to her, this was his will. She said she wanted them to be happy and loving, that God allowed them to have the time that they had together. She said that after that, she gave it up to God. Uh, on, 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 on her uh, 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 revival, uh, uh, and as a result, again, of being, off the, being on the ventilator for two months, her, her hands, her fingers have now uh, been black. And she says, at some point, my fingers are going to fall off. But she said, I'm all right. Because I'm in the hands of the Lord. Now, Lord, if somebody can praise the Lord, who's been on a ventilator for two months, somebody can praise the Lord, who literally saying, when I walk out of the hospital, I may not have my hands. I'm saying, if folk can praise the Lord in those side of circumstances, I'm going to say it right now, let everything, let everything, doesn't matter what the circumstance is, doesn't matter what you're going through. You ought to praise the Lord at all times. Got money, don't have money. Got a job, don't have a job. Got a friend, don't have a friend. Whatever it may be, you ought to praise the Lord no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, no matter the, the, the problem, no matter the people. You ought to praise the Lord at all times. Just one more time, in case anybody has missed it, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's it, praise the Lord. But you got to do it at all times. Father, how we love you, how we thank you, how we bless you, and how we praise you. Woo! For being a God who's God at all times. And God, we know when we read this psalm, you are saying to us, we find out you can do all these things. We live with the reality, Father, you may not always do it the way we think, the way we want. You don't do it on the time that we think you should. But God, we know you can. And our faith is based upon what we know you can do. So we thank you, God for demonstrating to us that we ought to praise you, but we ought to praise you at all times. Not just when it's convenient, not, not just when we're feeling good, but when we're feeling bad. Not just when we're happy, but even when we're sad. Not just when we're up, but even when we're down. Not just when we're in, but even when we're out. Not just when we have, but even when we don't have. Help us to learn to praise you, to adore you, to boast on you, to celebrate you, and to do it at all times. And then, God, the greatest thing that we can praise you for is your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't done anything else for us, you did all that we needed when you gave us Jesus. And when you gave Jesus to us and you gave us to Jesus, God, thank you so much. For the reality of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray again for that person that may be listening, that may not 
put trust and confidence in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Speak to their heart even now. Help them to come to the reality of his saving grace and to know that they must believe that he died, believe that he was buried in a grave, and believe that you raised him from the dead. And they too can know what it really means to praise the Lord. They too can know what it means to adore and to boast and to celebrate you because you've given them the greatest gift of all and that you brought them out of darkness into your marvelous light. You brought them out of sin and you made them a saint. And we thank you for that reality. Speak to their heart now, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, for those of you who haven't trusted in Christ as your Savior, if you're listening in today, today is this moment is designed for you and mine. This is your opportunity. This is the privilege that God has given. And he has caused us or called us to extend that to anyone that may not be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you may ask the question, what must I believe? You must believe that Jesus died. Well, you must believe he lived. Yeah, that God did send his son. You must believe that he died. You must believe that he was buried in a grave. And then you must believe that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says if you can believe that, if you believe that today, if you stop trying to make your way to God on your terms, if you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, this thing that I'm doing just don't work, just doesn't work. But God so loved you that he gave his only son to die in your place. He gave his only son to sacrifice his life in your place. The Bible clearly says if you do that today, you can have eternal life. That's good news, y'all. That's good news. So today, if you haven't trusted him, here's your opportunity to do that. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Young man, young lady, boy, girl, whoever you may be. You may be sitting with someone or you know someone by way of free Facebook, got that telephone number, whatever it may be that you can contact them and say, could you help me understand a little bit better about what Lee Skinner was talking about? I think I got it, but I'm not absolutely sure. You can talk to them. If you don't want to do that, you can always call our church and we will get back with you as soon as we possibly can. The phone number is 713-672. 9847. You can always check us out on our on the website. We'll be glad again to respond to whatever your request may be concerning what the Lord has done for you and the fact that he has saved you and given you eternal life. He has forgiven you of all your sins and caused you now to be a child of the living God. Father, we love you again and thank you. But knowing again, you'll pray that your word falls on good ground in the hearts and minds of these, your people. It is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. And for his sake, we pray it. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Those of you that give by way of live streaming, you know what you need to do. There are a few people that are present in our building today. And so if you need assistance from one of the deacons, just raise your hand. They are amply ready to serve you and to assist you. If you would do that, please, ma'am, and please, sir. Father God, how we love you and thank you again for every giver and for every gift that it may be used for the ongoing of your kingdom, for the magnifying of your name, and for the edifying of your church. And we pray it all in Christ's name and his name alone. Amen. 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 Just by way of announcement, well, no, let me let me do this. Our birthdays, we got a few people. Wonderful. Power clap if y'all would help me out. Phyllis Nervous, Donovan Alexander, Chloe Lofton, Travez Howard, Mary Lewis, Malika Anderson, Diamond Esprit, Marvin Wilson, and Brianna Melanson. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. We have one ha uh, wedding anniversary we're celebrating. Happy anniversary to Keith and Crana Berry. 15 years. God bless you all. God bless you all. We're getting ready again for our transition to our Sunday school. Uh, we're going to start at, at, at 1025. 1025. And we'll go until about 1110. Start at 1025, 1110, 1115. Uh, 
We go until that time. Uh, Sister Catherine Bonner is going to be doing live streaming. Uh, brothers, we always say our Sunday school, if you see a lady teaching, uh, we are observing what the Bible teaches us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, that our women here do teach our women. They do minister to other women of our church. Uh, if you want to listen in, that's up to you. But we're, again, just trying to align with what the scripture teaches us uh, as it relates to teaching and to authority. And so this week, uh, as far as Bible study is concerned, we're going to take a kind of a, 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 a summer break. I'm, I'm hoping, boy, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Some of y'all been on break so long. I hope these two weeks don't really break y'all, you know what I mean? That's, that's my hope. So I pray and trust that you uh, will respond again to our various videos that are already on air. Uh, those things that you can watch over and over as many times as you choose to do it, that you can still be encouraged in the word of God. And I pray again that you are utilizing those efforts. So keep in mind, we have our Sunday school today. No Bible study on Wednesday of next, this coming week. Again, we're going to resume our services, our normal worship on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And we look forward to seeing everybody to participate in that effort on that at that time. Pastor Johnson is going to be on the conference call with our men. All the rest of us know what we need to do. I'm going to ask you to pray for Stefan Skinner. He is preaching today at uh, Mercy at Calvary. Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Raymond Collins. Pray that God will allow him to speak truth uh, as, he, uh, as he goes forth. But we stand wherever we may be as we get ready for our benediction for this day. Thank you, band. Thank you all so much for your participation and your presence. And, of course, again, to the puppet ministry, thank you all so much. Absolutely off the chain. Love it. Y'all can do that anytime y'all want. Anytime y'all ready, y'all just let us know. Father, how we love you, how we thank you, how we bless you and praise you for your greatness, your goodness, and your kindness toward us. We pray, God, as we get rid of the transition that you would keep our minds stayed on the fact that you deserve all due respect, all honor, all glory, and all praise. We pray, God, that as we uh, move forward in this day, help us to always reflect on just how great you are, how good you are, and we owe our lives to you to live it in such a way that's pleasing to you. We pray now that your grace be with us now and forever as you reign. In Jesus' name we pray.